On the southern outskirts of the Misty Mountains, an elf maid appeared. Nimrodel was her name. She had traveled many leagues with her husband Amroth in search of the haven of Adhalond, founded by her kin after the First Age had ended. Lost and unsettled, she came upon a river flowing from the mountains. It seemed to beckon to her, as it reminded her of the stream that she had once called home, back in the Golden Wood. She strayed there for months in a deep sleep. During her sleep, an autumn storm swept away a ship, holding a group of elves. Among them, King Amroth of Lothlorien, her betrothed. From the ship he leapt into the waves of the Bay of Belfalas, and was never heard from again. What became of the elf maid, no one knows. One of her servants, named Mithralas, was said to have married a Numenorian called Imrazor. Thus, the men of that land established the city of Dol Amroth, and to this day are said to carry elvish blood. The land where Nimrodel was lost would come to be called Dor and Ernil, or Land of the Prince. The haven of Ethelond would be abandoned, and so the only memories of the elves of Belfalas would linger in the blood of the people of Dol Amroth, in the woods of the river that had caused their doom. The company had had little sleep during the night, wary of the invisible but unsettling presence of the undead army surrounding them. At dawn, Aragorn led the Dúnedain, the sons of Elrond, and his companions Gimli and Legolas from the Black Stone atop the hill of Erech. They journeyed through the mountain pass of Tarlang's Neck into the land of Lamedon. The town of Calambel they found deserted, as well as the forge of the river Kiril. Those who had not gone to war had fled to the hills in fear of the dead. As they passed the Ringlow Vale, dawn no longer came. A black fume hung in the air, in which shadow the undead seemed even more frightening. In the land of Dor and Ernil, they met the first living souls since they had entered the paths of the dead. Lord Angbor of Lamadon had been holding off a group of corsairs who had sailed up the river Gilrain. Aragorn bade the Lord to follow him after the ghostly army had passed and to join him at Pelargir. So the Grey Company crossed the green fields of Lebanon towards Pelargir, towards war. The Lord of the Rings Online, or Lotro, is an MMORPG released in 2007 and remains, in my humble opinion, one of the best adaptations of Tolkien's world. In this video I will try to show you the hidden or not so hidden details that make the world of Lotro so immersive and lively. This time we will be taking a look at the southern fiefdoms or outlands of Gondor, famed for the seven rivers that flow through it. This area marked the point in Lotro's development where content was released in separate quest packs instead of larger expansions. In game it consists of the western Gondor, central Gondor and eastern Gondor. The amount of time spent in the southern fiefdoms spans no more than 10 pages in the books, and a lot of things happen off screen so to speak. For this reason it must have been a difficult region to adapt into the game. Let's have a look at how the developers did. The paths of the dead exit into the Morthont Vale, named after the river that flows through it. This river is also known as the Black Root, as it springs from the sinister paths of the dead. It is described as a rich, grassy valley where many folk dwelt. The game accurately represents this description, and we immediately see it looks very different from the version of the Vale that was shown in the session instance I showcased in the previous video on the paths of the dead. This change is actually highlighted by the steward of the Vale, Malthalam. He was appointed by Lord Duinhir of the Black Root Vale who left with his sons Duilin and Deruvin to aid Lord Denethor in Minas Tirith, as described in the books. Malthalam explains a forest once stretched to all corners of the Vale, when Isildur brought the stone of Erech from Númenor. This is exactly how the Vale looks in the session instance, and it shows the large amount of time that has passed since the arrival of the Númenóreans, and how they spread through the lands. 
When you arrive, the veil is in an uproar. Crazed animals run wild, and some of the dead that have refused Aragorn's call haunt the inhabitants. The people of the Vale do not trust the mysterious stranger who caused the ghosts to be more present, and ask you to clear them out of the local mine. In the mine, you find a couple called Ruskat and Holkas, who have refused to follow Aragorn. However, their refusal was not out of allegiance towards Sauron, as they point out his messengers only tell lies. They refused because they did not want to fight, and are planning to flee from the conflict, living their eternal cursed lives in each other's arms. While these refusing ghosts are not mentioned in the books and are an addition from the developers, it is interesting how the ghosts are portrayed as a group with differing opinions and personalities. Aragorn and his ghostly horde move through the Pass of Tarlang's Neck. Named after a giant from Gondorian folklore, who is said to have broken his neck while hauling the great stones his people used to build the White Mountains. His body was said to be used in the construction of the rest of the mountains, with his head and his load of rocks forming Tarlang's peaks, and thus the pass being called his neck. They come to the town of Kalambel upon the river Kiril and find it abandoned, as Lord Angbor left for war, and the other inhabitants fled the town due to the rumors of the King of the Dead coming their way. In game, the inhabitants have returned when you visit, though a nearby village has been taken over by corsairs, filling Kalambel with refugees. This town contains a captain called Jayax, a character that really merits its own video someday. But you convince him to leave the town after defeating many of his men. He later asks you to aid him as a rival captain has murdered his crew, thus preventing your former foe. There are many more corsair camps to be found in Lamadon, showing the major threat they represent to the country of Gondor. Here we also get the first glimpse of the southern beacons of Gondor, which are used to relay messages from Minas Tirith to Dol Amroth. While the Grey Company never sets foot in the fiefdom of Belfalas, it does play an important role in the story. It is here where the Morthond flows out into the sea, and where the elven harbour that Nimrodel and Amroth sought was located. The remnants of the harbour are still present, though long since abandoned and now overrun with corsairs. In a small cave you can still find a small group of elves watching over the place, led by a shrouded elven lady called Dorthaneth. To the south stands the city of Dol Amroth, named after the elfish prince that perished in the waters nearby. The lord of Dol Amroth, Imrahil, has already left to help defend Midas Tirith. When we enter the city we meet Lothiriel, his daughter, who has been put in charge of the defense of the city in the game. Their harbor has been barricaded by corsair ships, though at first in doubt of what to do, Lothiriel ultimately decided to keep defying the corsairs while you race towards Pelargir to help fend off the ships headed there. This will not be the last time we meet Lothiriel, as she will marry King Eomer after the war, according to the books. When we enter the Ringlo Vale, the sky is darkened by the black fumes spewing from Mordor. Little was mentioned about the Ringlo and its surroundings in the books except that 300 men went to aid Minas Tirith together with Durvorin, the son of the Lord of the Ringlo Vale. In game, the Lord is called Borhador. He is very old, which is supposed to be the reason why he sent his son in his stead. After helping the town of Ethring, with disposing some of the dead that have refused Aragorn's call, you continue down to Doran Erniel, the land of the prince. The Grey Company has since passed the town of Linhir, and the people have returned. Outside are the signs of battle, and inside the people are mourning their dead. Though you are in a hurry, you help the town with a small errand. A child has disappeared, and after finding her doll near a camp of corsairs, you are worried she might have been taken. Your search leads you up the river Gilrain, where you ultimately find the child sleeping near the riverbank. Though she is not alone. Next to her stands Roaming Star, the maiden of the river Gilrain. It was her song that lulled Nimrodel to sleep at her banks all those centuries ago. She has watched over the child while she slept, 
and helps you bring her back to her parents. After this short detour, you head towards Lebanon. Before you leave Linhir, you speak with an old man who has been dancing around town ever since the shadowy host has passed by. The old man is called Ioron, and he tells you he recognized a figure among the marching ghosts. A man he knew by the name of Thorongil, who in Ioron's youth had led a raid on the fleet of Umbar. This is a reference to an alias Aragorn used in his younger years, when he indeed did serve in the army of Gondor and marched upon Umbar to burn their fleet. Ioron sends you towards this mythical Thorongil, and after riding across the lush green fields of Lebanon, you finally catch up to Aragorn in his camp, just outside of Pelargir, as he prepares to take on the fleet of Umbar. The Battle of Pelargir is quite short in the books. As soon as the Grey Company arrives at the harbor, Aragorn unleashes the undead host upon the Corsairs, deciding the battle straight away. In game, the player character infiltrates the settlement together with Elrohir and Eladan to open the gates for the Grey Company. At the end of the battle, we witness a part of the ghostly attack. It is described in the books how a Dunedan was sent to every ship still in the harbor to comfort the slaves chained to the oars. In game, we join Aragorn as he confronts the captain of the ship that had blocked the harbor in Dol Amroth. The ghosts send him to his grave. As Legolas recounts this story to Merry and Pippin after the Battle of the Palinor Fields, he sings a song about the lands of Lebanon. He speaks of the golden Malos flowers, whose bells welcomed ships from afar, and white Alfirin swaying in the wind, known by the Rohirrim as Symbolmine. It is upon these blooms that dawn now rises, though still dulled by the smoke of Mordor. Aragorn gives the ghosts their freedom, though he does it at their camp instead of the battlefield. Pelargir is quickly filled with people from the nearby lands, watched over by a statue of Thorongil, the same Thorongil that now had freed the harbor. After collecting some of the weapons the enemy had left behind and loading up the ships, Aragorn sends you on foot through Losanarg together with Angbor. He asks you to gather news and find Gandalf and Faramir in Minas Tirith to tell them of his victory for Aragorn does not trust Denethor with this information. As the fires of war draw closer, the air now glows a bright red, and ash falls from the sky. The road takes us past the Tumladen Valley, where we find all the women and children who were evacuated from Minas Tirith, just as the Gondorian guard Beregrom described to Pippin before the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. We cross the river Erui into Losanarg and scout out the Harland, the harbor where Aragorn means to land his fleet. In the distance, we get our first glimpse at Minas Tirith, shrouded in smoke. The Harland itself is completely overrun by orcs, and any ships that were still present have been burned. While Lord Angbor assails the Harland with the men he took there by land, as described in the books, you take a hidden ferry over the Anduin towards Ithilien, the Gardens of Gondor, in an effort to reach Faramir and Gandalf as quickly as you can. And while we silently cross the Anduin towards Ithilien, somewhere two hobbits are slowly but surely making their way to Mordor. Thanks for watching this video. It was actually one of the most difficult ones to write so far. At this point in the story, during the first few chapters of The Return of the King, everything is hurtling towards the Grand Battle of the Palinor Fields. To make matters worse, all Gondor-related content between Helm's Deep and the Mordor expansions was released in smaller quest packs instead of big ones. This essentially means that most of Gondor is separated into lots of smaller areas throughout which the player character continuously interacts with different parts of the canon storyline. As the final nail in the coffin of structure, some storylines introduced in these areas are not resolved until the entire area of the southern fiefdoms gets reimagined in the Fourth Age during the King's Gondor mini-expansion. This video may have therefore been a bit messier than usual, but I still hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.